Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. And today, if you guys, this is another movie review. Now, this is going to be kind of an older film. I guess it looks sort of old. It came out in 2020, I guess. Uh, this is going to be the SpongeBob movie, or the SpongeBob movie, uh, Sponge on the Run. Uh, now, this was, I believe, it was kind of weird, because this movie was released, I think, on, like, Netflix or Paramount Plus, or something weird. Like, oh, it was only in Canada, or something weird. I don't, it wasn't in my theater. I never saw it until just recently. I got it from exchange for, like, five bucks on DVD. And, uh, you know, I heard really kind of negative things. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people love the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, the first one, as do I. It's a great freaking movie. SpongeBob, uh, the second one, whatever the fudge was called, it was good. I, I don't I don't hate it. I think it's probably the weakest of the three, but it's not a bad movie. It's just pretty good. And then uh, this one, of course, SpongeBob the Run, it was going to have a whole like weird story with like, it was like an acid trip. It was like freaking uh, like weird space cats and the, the dolphin thing was back. It was a really weird premise. And, uh, you know, they kind of reworked it into uh, SpongeBob the Run. And look, you know, upon going into it, I was like, all right, it's a SpongeBob movie. SpongeBob's one of my favorite shows of all time. It's a great show for kids and adults, you know, teens, adults. It's, it's, it's for everyone. So, I'm like, all right, the first movie's great, the second movie's good, show was freaking fantastic, I own season 1 to 12, I, I've seen everything SpongeBob, I'm a massive fan, and, you know, this film, I was like, all right, don't, don't let me down, and it didn't, I mean, this film might be my favorite SpongeBob movie, I mean, that's freaking crazy, because I, I heard it's, oh, it's horrible, it's garbage, it's the worst one, it's trash, don't watch it, it's horrible, and I actually freaking loved it, I think that... Uh, you know, there are a few weird issues I've had. Some of the jokes don't land. Some of the writing's a bit weird. Um, it takes about 20, 25 minutes to actually kind of set up the plot. Um, you know, some some SpongeBob specials are a little slow. You know, it's just kind of him just doing whatever the F he's doing at the Krusty Krab. You know, flip burgers. Or, you know, so sometimes the SpongeBob specials are a little, uh, you know, they take a little bit of time to get to the actual point of the plot. And this is no different. However, aside from a little bit of a slow beginning, which, look, there's moments in this film that are slow, right? The beginning, there's a whole scene at the end where, uh, kind of, you know, Sandy, Plant, or Sandy Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plant, uh, Patrick, they're all kind of testifying in, you know, court, I guess. Um, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't boring, but, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm watching, and I'm like, this is good. You know, it's sometimes, it's, it's funny sometimes, the court scene, I guess, in the beginning, you know, there's, there's funny jokes in there. It's not like, oh, I'd cut it out. You know, I wouldn't do that, because it's already 90 minutes. It's not that long of a film. But there are moments in there where I'm like, all right, this is kind of going a little bit slow. And I get it because of what they're trying to do, which I'll get into in a minute. But again, without getting into, you know, because I'm going to get into it when I talk about the positives. But for as far as negative, some of the jokes don't land. It's a bit slow. But other than that, I think this is a very good film. I think that it has a lot of really cool callbacks. The original, the Paddy Wagon, is now the Paddy Mobile. Um, and it's kind of weird because this seems to be in the same canon as the first movie, yet it's completely incoherent babble. And, you know, Spongebob has moments where, you know, season one, uh, Sandy and, and Spongebob, they meet or whatever, and they're like, oh, we're friends. And then, you know, season freaking six or whatever, Larry the Lobster's like, hey, we met. And he's like, Spongebob's like, probably not. So there's a lot of, like, really weird uh, canon inconsistencies in the show. And look, you know, it's freaking Spongebob. You know, what do you want? It's not the most lore-intensive show. Uh, it's straight up just a comedy, but at the same time, you know, you do have to adhere to the rules, and I think that uh, this film, I don't know what is it, you know, is it its own thing? Is it in the same canon as the first film? Is it in the canon to the show? Because in this show, they kind of do a whole backup to, like, Camp Coral, where Spongebob and they're all kids, and they all meet at camp, and it's, it's, it's a fun scene to watch, you know, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to the show, and then they, home, they made a whole freaking Camp Coral show, which is apparently complete dog water, so I don't know... Uh, you know, how that's gonna work. Look, the Camp Coral thing, there was a big effing controversy, you know, oh, they're, they're making a spin-off, Steven Hillenburg didn't want it! You know, look, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the movie. As it, Camp Coral is in this film, the third Spongebob movie, it works. Now, what they did with the show, I didn't see the show, I saw maybe the first episode in, like, when I went to Amish country or something stupid, and it was pretty terrible, um, you know, and I haven't really seen the Patrick Star show, but for what it's in this film... I think it works. Now, going on to the positives, the animation is freaking awesome. This is one of, this, you know, there, there's, SpongeBob is 2D, right? And then they kind of had the whole 3D live action thing in the second, in the first. And then they kind of had, you know, this is a traditionally all 3D animated film with some live action, you know, shite, I guess, thrown in there. And uh, it works. It just works. You know, it has the Lego movie kind of, uh, 
I guess, attention to detail where there's stuff going on in the background and the characters, sometimes the, the line might not be that funny, but what, the, what Squidward's, you know, face or, you know, the, what they're doing animated-wise is funny. So I think the animation really works for the, you know, style of SpongeBob. It's pretty effing great what they were able to do and uh, very expressive, very, you know, it's, it's very a uh, unique movie. Just, like, the animation alone is worth seeing this film. It's that freaking good. No, it's not Tintin. It's not the four Lego movies. You know, it's nothing that insanely well made where it's like, this is one of the best looking films ever. But it does look good for a SpongeBob movie. I think that's, you know, the important part is that, you know, for SpongeBob, and I'm not saying, oh, for SpongeBob, like SpongeBob's bad. It's a great show. But, you know, when you when you look at the CG and the, the uh, live action elements in the SpongeBob show, not the greatest, you know. And they kind of do that, you know, the patchy, the pirate crap with Potty. You know, they do that deliberately to make it look cheesy for the for the comedic tone. Uh, this, if they made it look cheesy, uh, you know, I don't know if that would work. The CGI in this film, when they go to like the when the, when they're kind of dreaming and Keanu Reeves is there in the Sage, which he actually pretty pretty uh, played a pretty vital part in the film, which is kind of cool. Um, I was like, hey, he's John Wick, he's Neo. It's kind of funny, but uh, you know, him him playing a part is kind of neat. But <clears throat> going into the I guess the uh, Wild West scene with Snoop Dogg for whatever the hell. Because I'm watching this and I'm like, alright, why aren't they breathing? You know, why, how are they able to breathe on land? Why the fudge is Snoop Dogg here? Why is Tiffany Haddish here? Why is freaking Keanu Reeves in a, in a tumbleweed stage? And then it clicked. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, why is the beginning so slow? Why are they in court for 20 minutes? You know what I mean? why? This is really boring into the film. And when you get to... The Old West scene, it's like, oh, it's a freaking dream. You know, now it, it all clicks. You know, it all makes sense. So there are moments where, you know, Snoop Dogg is just there and there's a dance number. And, uh, the freaking dude is uh, the guy from the man, uh, Book of Boba Fett. I don't know, Danny Trejo. He's there and it, it makes complete not, it, it makes complete, uh, completely zero sense why any of this stuff is happening. But it's because they're in a dream and it's SpongeBob. So it works. If this was any other movie and it was just, oh, yeah, it's. It's random to for randomness. It wouldn't work. Uh, this is random, but it has a purpose. It's random because they're dreaming and they're SpongeBob and Patrick are pretty stupid. So it makes sense, and it, it is it is entertaining. It, it you know it does work. Um, and then there's that scene where they kind of go to uh, you know Atlantic City or whatever, and there's that really cool montage where they're gambling and some pretty funny jokes in there. Uh, I, I do think that the first film is funnier, but this is funnier, this mil, uh, film, than the second one where they're all superheroes. I think that this one works better in terms of a plot. I think that, again, you know, it's like, how do you, how does, how do we marry the idea of Plankton wanting to steal the formula for the 15th quintillionth time to, you know, uh, Gary getting kidnapped for the king in, you know, Atlantic City? And it works. They up and did it. It actually makes sense if you watch the film. And there are some jokes that don't click in the trailer, like Patrick going, seven starts with an L? And the whole audience is like, <gasps> it's like, I, I was watching the trailer and I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Like, why, why is the audience so in shock of what he's say, <clears throat> you know, saying? It, it makes no sense. And I watched the film and finally, you know, they didn't, they edited it, edited it differently. So now the joke actually works in the film. So there's, you know, it's not the funniest film ever made, but it is funnier than the second one. And it's a little less funny than the first, but uh, I still think the comedy is pretty good. So the, the whole court scene, which this film did something I didn't expect Spongebob to ever freaking do, which is have a genuinely emotional, like I teared up a little bit in a fucking Spongebob movie, and I don't know what that says about me, but it's pretty freaking crazy, because you know, I've been watching this show since I was a little kid, not little, little, but you know, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm 23 and I'm still watching, I'm going to watch it for forever probably, and <laughs> until, until one of them, you know, stops deciding to make the show, but there's moments of this where, you know, Plankton, uh, you know, Spongebob goes to Atlantic City and uh, uh, Mr. Krabs and Plankton are kind of, you know, all right, Plankton's trying to get the formula. Plankton wins because Spongebob's gone. They can't make the patties and it's just gone to complete chaos. It's gone to complete uh, poop. And Squidward and Mr. Krabs are like, well, he's not here. I guess we're screwed. So there's a really genuinely, like, good scene where Mr. Krabs, there's no comedy. Mr. Krabs just genuinely effing gives up and he just gives Plankton the formula. Plankton literally wins. And, you know, Mr. Krabs is, like, kind of heartbroken. And there's no, like, funny moment. It's just him, like, all right, I give up. And he kind of, you know, bows his head and he just closes the door in his uh, office. And he, he just gives up. And he's like, all right, Plankton, you win. Here you go. I'm done. It's over. We're done. And Plankton's like, I win? You know, he's not like, yes, to your feet. I mean, he's just kind of like, oh, well, that's kind of weird. You know, he's like, I, I expected this to be different. So it's kind of unique that, you know, Plankton's trying to be doing this all these years. And he finally wins. And he doesn't like it. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Mr. Krabs, 
uh, you know, he's always kind of optimistic in a sense, and he kind of gives up, you know, he's like, all right, whatever, screwed. And it was that moment where I'm like, this film freaking rocks. Like, they, you know, I, like, I don't watch Spongebob for drama, but it's kind of funny that they actually tackled that in a really unique way, just for that one scene. And then there's that old court scene where they're all kind of meeting, and, oh, Spongebob helped me in Camp Coral, and Spongebob helped me in Camp Coral. And they're kind of doing all that, and, uh, you know, it works. It's a bit long, you know, and I was kind of, I'm sitting there watching this film, and I'm like, if this is the end of the film... You know, if you're if we're gonna spend like twenty to fifteen minutes uh, just hearing court testimonies of how SpongeBob helped these people, this is kind of a boring ass way to end this film. And thankfully, there is a you know there, it doesn't end that way. There's an action scene in the end, so that was good. So, so that's not really a negative after the you know it was a negative during the film because I'm like you know if they're truly gonna end this in a very boring way. I don't like that, but, you know, there is a uh, escape scene, and there's a, you know, kind of a, I don't want to say action scene, but there is kind of an escape uh, after that. So, that was actually kind of cool. That, you know, Sponge, uh, the, the, the characters, uh, Sandy, uh, Mr. Krabs, and uh, Squidward and Patrick, they kind of you say, like, look, Spongebob helped me in Camp Coral to do X, Y, Z. And they're like, no, Spongebob is just a good person. You know what I mean? He's just a good person. And I think that's what's really unique about him, you know, is that he, he doesn't do things for a reward. He just does it because he's a good freaking dude. And it's really cool that, you know, um, they're, they're trying to, you know, of course, uh, tell the king, look, don't effing kill Spongebob. Don't behead him for, you know, trying to get Gary back because he did, he did this and this. And, you know, it is, it would have been cheesy in any other way, but it's not. Because if you watch the entire show up to this point, it's like a big click moment. It's like everything that he's doing, they're under, you know, Mr. Krabs is like, oh, I thought the formula was just these words on a paper, but the formula is SpongeBob. Like, the secret fa uh, formula is SpongeBob. Without him, out of the equation, out of the equation, it's all poop. Like Luke in The Last Jedi. I know I keep bringing up The Last Jedi in every freaking movie, but it's true. Luke leaves, and everything goes to shit. He returns, everything goes back to the way it was. Everything's returned. You know, Luke, it's a whole thing. I, I did it plenty of times before. You know the whole story. But that is the element of that for Mr. Krabs. You know, Squidward... Uh, is a little, it, may, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because, you know, Spongebob's like eight and Squidward's like eight, so, you know, it doesn't make sense, but whatever. Um, it's a freaking Spongebob movie. So, it is kind of cool that, you know, everyone hates Squidward's clarinet and Squidward decides to give up on clarinet as a little kid and Spongebob's the one who says no and he kind of, he kind of fudges it, you know, he's like, oh, you won by default. They, they got it wrong. Here's the trophy. So, Spongebob knows that everyone hates his clarinet, and he doesn't like the clarinet, but he clearly knows that it means a lot to Squidward, so he fudges the thing to, you know I mean, like, and same with Patrick. Patrick misses home, and Spongebob becomes a friend, and Sandy, and Spongebob tells Sandy, what do you, you know, Sandy's like, I want to be a scientist, and, and he's like, well, then you can be a scientist. Freaking do it, you know? And she's like, wow, you, you know, it, so it's really cool that Spongebob kind of, uh, you know, even this, it, may, it doesn't make any effing sense to the show at all, because it just doesn't. Like, you know, if you're a true Spongebob fan, you know in and out like me, it doesn't make sense in the canon. But for this film, it makes sense and it does work. And then they end with a really cool, you know, kind of action scene and all that. And it is funny because they started doing this little dance uh, number and I was like, all right, this is kind of cheesy. And I know, I don't, I don't want to say this is a kid's film because it's not. It's for everyone. It's an animated film. There's a difference. But there are kids watching this film and adults. So I'm like, oh, the song's in there. You know, the kids are probably damn. But then I'm like, wait. It clicks because it's a it's a thematic song, and in the in the movie it, it was a trick. They sang this really kind of sappy song to trick Poseidon so they can or Poseidon, the king or whatever so they could effing get uh, Gary and run away. So I was like, oh, that makes sense, you know. So it's really crazy because I heard this movie was complete dog cheeks, and I'm watching it and I'm like, this is actually good. Like this is, and I'm like, all right, it's pretty good. It's all right. I'm like holy at the mo at the movie's end, I'm like, holy crap, this is freaking great. You know, this is like easily like. A little baby notch behind the first movie. It's a very good film. And if you haven't seen it, because, um, again, this was kind of a weird uh, movie when it came out. It was only in Canada or whatever the fudge. Um, go to, you know, buy it on DVD for like five, six bucks. You know, try to find it on YouTube or, you know, whatever you got to do. Because it's a good movie. If you like Spongebob, it's a great freaking movie. Um, it's got heart, which none of the other really movies had a whole lot of. Um, it has really funny moments. It's pretty cool action scenes. It's got the way this movie is shot. I wouldn't be saying this, but for a Spongebob movie... This film is shot freaking great. There's a lot of really cool shots where the camera's moving in and out. And, again, with the 3D animation, it looks really great. So, again, I kind of expected this movie to be, you know, just okay. 
like kind of a mediocre to bad special of the show, but this is actually a good film, and I would recommend it to you know SpongeBob fans. Um, you know, Young Animal. I think it's a really great film. And for 91 minutes, it, it, it felt a little longer than what it should have, especially that court scene where they're all kind of explaining. Again, it has a thematic meaning, but it was a little bit slow. The beginning is a little slow too, but. Overall, I think this is a really good SpongeBob film. I'm going to give Sponge on the Run, uh, give it an A minus. How about that? I think for a SpongeBob movie, it's easily one of the best, um, if not on par with the first. And again, it has some really good animation, really funny moments, good thematic meaning. Uh, again, for a huge SpongeBob fan like myself, it was really cool to kind of see these, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, plot points, I guess, kind of co uh, coalesce into each other. Uh, to see that, like, really genuinely, like, kind of uh, like crazy scene where Mr. Krabs just gives up. You know, like, there's no jokes. It's just, all right, Plankton, you win. Here you go. And Plankton's like, oh, I guess I won. I'm not happy. Pretty cool stuff. And, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Because, you know, the trailers kind of play this movie as like, oh, it's a buddy movie, and it's stupid and funny, and Keanu Reeves is up in here. And, uh, you know, he was good in this. You know, he's not a great actor, but, you know, he was all right. He played a better role than, or a bigger role than what I thought. So, again, it's a pretty good film. Um, it is weird to hear SpongeBob say crappy, and Squidward say freaking, and hear hell and damn and, and all that in a SpongeBob movie. But, again, not a kid's film. It's for everyone, so I guess they, it makes sense, but it also doesn't. You know, hearing SpongeBob say crappy, I guess, kind of gives to the idea that, they're, you know, these words... Freaking crap, hell, damn. They are swear words, and they're in this movie. Which means they're in the canon, which is really weird, but whatever. Uh, you know, it would have been better if they made a dolphin noise. I get it, it's a PG-rated film. It is a bit weird, though, like I said, to hear SpongeBob say crappy, but whatever. Um, it works for the situation, and I'm not complaining, but it is kind of weird. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little review of Sponge on the Run. I know I wanted to review it in 2020 or whenever the fudge this movie came out, but, uh, you know, because it was, again, it was really weird with the way it was all... Uh, uh, kind of presented, I never got to see it until now, and I'm glad I did. It's a very good film. Again, it's on par with the first one, I think, and again, A-. minus. very good. Tell me in the comments below uh, what you think about Sponge on the Run. Have you seen it? What's your favorite SpongeBob movie out of the three? Apparently, Paramount Plus is making, like, four more movies, and uh, so SpongeBob is not going anywhere. I hope Tom Kenny and everyone, Bill Fagerbaki and everyone, uh, I hope they're all... Uh, <laughs> Immortal, because it seems like, uh, you know, they're just gonna, seems like Paramount and Nickelodeon just assumes that Tom Kenny is gonna live till 2099, uh, you know, I don't know what they're gonna do when they all pass away, if, like, if, I don't want them to, but, you know, you, you gotta think about it, you know, is this show ever gonna end, or there's just gonna, you know, it's gonna be like Simpsons, where they just keep rebooting it and going and going and going, I don't know. But uh, until that happens, apparently we're getting a whole lot of Spongebob content, and hey, I'm there for it, you know what I mean? Uh, I get all the DVDs. All the seasons, you know, and it, it, look, it's not weird for a grown man to say you like Spongebob, right? So don't be like, oh, you're a freaking weirdo. It's like, no, I, like, it's genuinely a good show for all ages. And uh, this is a genuinely good film as well. So it is pretty crazy that, uh, again, you know, hearing all the mixed signals, this is trash, this is complete poop. And I came out of it like, wow, this is on par with the first one. I think it's actually pretty crazy. So anyway, again, tell me in the comments down below what your favorite film out of the three are. It'd probably be one, and then three, and then two, if I really had to nail it down. But again, it, this one is very close to one. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little review. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.